of logs in our inventory and then it will sleep until uh, there's more logs in the inventory than what we currently have and it's going to sleep for eight seconds so if it takes uh, more than eight seconds to chop down the log it will start the loop over again because it will exit out of the sleep until but this is just saying it will continue sleeping for eight seconds or until this condition returns true okay uh, so as soon as we cut it down then uh, we want to check if our inventory is full again so instead of doing that down here we can just do that at the beginning so we can say if and we can actually do it in the same if statement as the tree dot interact. So we can say if get inventory dot uh, is full. So if our inventory, and then we're going to negate that. So we're going to say our inventory is not full. Uh, then it's going to go ahead and say tree dot interact. Uh, so if we're not full and we interact, then chop it down and sleep. Blah 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 blah. So now we know that it's okay to chop a tree. So let's compile this really quickly and then just go ahead and run it again. So it should start and click on the tree and wait until my internet stops fucking up and it'll sleep until eight seconds go by. There's the eight seconds. So it took a little too long to chop down the tree so it clicked the tree again. Oh, there we go. And it has a log so it stopped sleeping and now it's going to continue interacting. So we have a great sleep timer set up already um, and it will continue on this process uh, forever. So now we have the problem, what happens if the inventory is full? Well, we don't really have a case for that, so let's go ahead and add one right underneath this. Um, so we'll say if Get inventory dot is full so the inventory is full so it doesn't even matter if we have all logs or like all runes or all arrows or all food the inventory is full great so we just need to go back now so if the inventory is full then we're going to create a new area for the bank and we're going to walk to it we're going to interact with the banker and we're going to bank and come back to where we were so let's go ahead and start with making an area. So if you go into your client and you go into the tools tab, debugging, and then position player and enable it, it'll go ahead and show you up here using paint the position of our player. So our player is on tile 3092-3240 and the Z is zero. So let's go ahead and create a new area in our global variables called area bank tile or bank area excuse me equals new area and we have to import the method from dreambot and let's go ahead and copy this down so 3092 3240 3092 3240 and then let's get the other side of the bank because that's the area right from here to here come on internet please stop lagging <laughs> okay and the other tile is 3097 and fuck remembering these things so I'm just gonna do it one at a time uh, 3246 32 Four, six, and we're on the Z tile of zero, so we put zero in there. So if the inventory is full, uh, let's go ahead and just say that we are banking right now. Banking, it is. Time to bank. Okay, um, so if I uh, get local player, so that means our player uh, oh wait, let's actually say the bank area. Bank area. If the bank area contains get local player, so that means we're inside of the bank area uh, and we should just interact with the bank. Uh, then let's create a new NPC and we'll set that equal to, oh, and we'll call it banker and we'll set that equal to get, or get 
NPCs die closest, and we'll use the lambda. Oops, NPC. Yep. And we will say NPC is not equal to null. Same null check as before on the game object. And the NPC dot get name get name dot equals banker. Um, generally, that's not the best way to go about it because sometimes people have the bank option and their name isn't banker, like that dude at the uh, Duel Arena uh, bank. So instead of doing this way, we can just say NPC dot has action bank. Oops, B A N K. Learn to type. Okay. So now we're going to say banker dot interact uh, bank, right? Because that's what we want to do on the banker. We want to right click bank. So it's going to interact like that. And then we're just going to say. Um, so if we actually do interact with it, and always make sure you do uh, if statement check to make sure you don't continue doing stuff that you don't need to if the first condition hasn't happened. Uh, so if we interact, then we're going to sleep until uh, the bank dot is open. So the bank is open and we're going to wait for nine seconds uh, before continuing if it fails. So then we can say if uh, the bank is open. So that that's just saying that if this statement returns true and the time doesn't run out, then that entire statement will return true. Um, so basically, that's saying that our uh, the bank is open. Okay. Otherwise, it'll just loop again and try and interact again. Um, so the bank is now open. So we're going to say deposit all get bank dot deposit. Uh, we could say all except and create a new filter and say uh, we want to deposit all except an X. So let's just go ahead and say that deposit all except uh, I think it's item. Yeah, item uh, item is not equal to null. And remember the null check item dot get name dot contains x so all this is saying is that it will bank everything in your inventory except anything with the name containing x so it might happen to not bank a pickaxe uh, so that is a possibility uh, if you want to get really involved you can add bronze rune uh, mithril, adamant, all the different axes yourself. However, this is a very simple and effective way uh, to make sure that the bot will actually add, uh, deposit everything except for the axe.